What is going on YouTube? We're back with our next video. As you can see, today we're checking out my complete collection of unlicensed Tengen games released on the NES. Let's get started. Now Tengen has an interesting backstory on the NES. Without going into too much detail, Tengen is basically a sister company of Atari. Back in the 80s, Tengen was looking to get into the home console market in 1988 released their first and only three licensed games on the NES, RBI Baseball, Pac-Man, and Gauntlet. But Tengen was very unhappy with the strict licensing deals that Nintendo had in place. So secretly, they began working on a way to hack the anti-piracy chips that NES has had installed. And eventually, they succeeded. In 1989, they released their first unlicensed cartridges on the NES. Instead of the traditional grey cartridges that NES games usually came in, Tenga released cartridges that were matte black and looked more like an Atari cartridge. But Nintendo was not happy with Tengen. Not only had Tengen broken their licensing agreement, but they had used shady legal loopholes to obtain the anti piracy chip specs from the United States Copyright Office. Naturally, Nintendo sued Tengen. Any unlicensed games that hadn't been sold yet were recalled off the shelves. But thousands had already been sold. So, although they are rare, you can still buy most of them at a pretty decent price. So without any further ado, let's have a look. First on the list is a classic, Rolling Thunder. Let's check it out. This game was originally released to arcades from Namco back in 1986. Rolling Thunder is a classic run-and-gun shooter. You play as a secret government agent who must rescue his partner who has been taken by a group of terrorists. There's some cool mechanics in this game too. A lot of it revolves around taking cover from enemy fire and also entering doors shown on screen that contain hidden pickups and ammo. Rolling Thunder is definitely one of my favorite games ported from the arcades to the NES. It's pretty easy to find too. On PriceCharting.com, it's valued at about ten dollars. Next up, we have Pac-Man. Let's pop it in. Pac-Man was an arcade giant, released from Namco way back in 1980. Tengen released a licensed version for the NES in 1988, but would release an unlicensed version the following year. This port may not be as good as the arcade version, but it's pretty darn good. I don't have much else to say other than that. It's Pac-Man, and everyone's played it, it's a classic. On PriceSharding.com, it's valued at about $14. It's definitely the most common Tengen game I've seen in video game stores. Next up, we have Afterburner. Which is good, because let me tell you something. I've got the need. The need for speed. Afterburner is an arcade game, released by Sega to the arcades in 1987. This was one of the first games available on the NES that was made by Sega. You take control of an F-14 Tomcat fighter jet. There's 18 action-packed stages where you must defeat enemy jets using your machine guns and heat-seeking missiles. The creator of the game said that his inspiration for it was the movie Top Gun. Pick up a loose copy for $13, according to PriceCharting.com. Next up, we're having fun with the RBI Baseball Trilogy. They're all very similar, so we'll start with the first one. In 1986, Namco released Pro Yokuyu Family Stadium for the Japanese Famicom. In 87, Atari released RBI Baseball, on Nintendo arcade cabinets. The following year, Tengen would port a licensed version to the NES, but the next year, they would release their own unlicensed version. 
RBI Baseball was unique compared to other baseball games of the 80s, as it was licensed by the MLB PA and used actual pro baseball player names. This was a big deal back then. Each player has different stats and abilities that affect the gameplay. All three RBI games are very similar, but the graphics do get better with each sequel. The team rosters change as well. If you're a fan of baseball games, they're fairly cheap and fairly easy to find. Next up is one of my personal favorites. Let's play some Alien Syndrome. Alien Syndrome is a run and gun sci fi classic, released from Sega to arcades in 1987 and ported to NES the following year. You play as Ricky or Mary. Your mission is to rescue your fellow soldiers who have been taken hostage by the aliens. There's eight massive stages, infested with different creatures and aliens to battle. After you have rescued all the hostages from each level, you will need to battle a boss before going to the following stage. I had a lot of fun playing this game and highly recommend it. A loose copy on PriceTrain.com is only worth 15 bucks. Okay YouTube, I hope you like Looney Tunes, because up next we have The Roadrunner. Roadrunner is based on the Wile E. Coyote shorts from Looney Tunes. This game was released to arcades from Atari in 1985 and was ported to the NES in 1989. You play as the Roadrunner, who is being pursued by Wile E. Coyote. As the Roadrunner, you must pick up bird seed and other pickups while avoiding obstacles such as cars. All the while, running from Wile E. Coyote. This game's okay, it's, it's kind of fun, but definitely not anything to write home about. If you're a fan of Looney Tunes, it might be worth checking out though. A loose copy of Roadrunner on PriceCharting.com is worth 15 bucks. Next up, we got Vindicators, a tank classic. Ah, uh, Vindicators, the OG of tank controls. This arcade classic had an unlicensed NES release back in 1989. The player takes control of a tank and must battle your way through multiple stages. As you progress, you must not only defeat enemies, but worry about making sure that you don't run out of fuel and that your shield stays up. If you do run out of gas, your tank then slows down to a crawl. A countdown timer then begins. If you do not find any gas pickups in the allotted time, it is game over. A loose copy of Indicators is worth $10 on PriceTrading.com. It's a fun one and definitely one to check out. Next on the list, we have a classic, Miss Pac-Man.
This Midway Classic graced arcades back in 1982. Critics hailed the game for its improved graphics and gameplay. It was also one of the first games to have a female protagonist. The unlicensed Tengen port came to the NES in 1989. It is considered by many to be the best Pac-Man game available on the NES. Otherwise, there's not much to say about this game. It, it's just another version of Pac-Man. But it's definitely a fun one. A loose copy of Miss Pac-Man goes for $18 on PriceJarting.com. Ow! Got the cherry. Next on the list, we have a shoot 'em up classic. Welcome to Fantasy Zone. Fantasy Zone is another Sega classic that came to arcades back in 1986. The unlicensed port came to the NES in 1989. As you can see, this is a very colorful shoot 'em up. It was one of the first games to coin the subgenre Cute 'em Up. The player takes control of a spaceship that can side scroll left or right. There's several enemy bases that must be destroyed. After all the bases have been destroyed, you must face an enemy boss before moving on to the next level. Fantasy Zone is a must play if you're a fan of shoot 'em ups. A loose copy on pricecharting.com is worth 30 bucks. This is a really fun, cute game that I would highly recommend. Next up, we have one of the more obscure games available on the NES from Tengen. Let's check out. Skull and Crossbones. This is a weird pirate theme beat em up, made by Atari, brought to arcades in 1989. Later that year, an unlicensed version would come to the NES. The player takes control of a pirate named One Eye, who must save his princess from the clutches of an evil wizard. There's also a two-player mode available, where the second player assumes the role of a pirate named Red Dog. Throughout the level, you must battle at least 15 characters before moving on to the next stage. There's different weapons available as well as treasure which you can trade in for new weapons at the end of each stage. As you can see, it's a quirky colorful game. Definitely one to check out. Price charting has this game worth at $11. Okay, next on the list is Clax. Let's get Klaxon. This puzzler classic was made by Atari and released into arcades in 1990. The same year, Tengu released an unlicensed port for the NES. Clax was developed during the heyday of Tetris. Puzzle games were a hot commodity, and Atari was looking to cash in. And thus, Clax was born. The player must catch colored tiles coming down a conveyor belt. You then score points by arranging the blocks in certain orders. You must get stacks of three, whether they be vertical, horizontal, or diagonal. It's basically if Tic-Tac-Toe and Tetris had a baby. This game is simple, fun, 
and very easy to play. It's highly addictive too. Definitely one to check out. On PriceCharting.com, the game is valued at just $12. Next up we have Pac-Mania. And I promise this is the last Pac-Man related game available from Tengen. Let's check it out. Pac-Mania was of course made by Namco. It was released to the arcades in 1987, and in 1990, Tengen ported an unlicensed version to the NES. It's a fun game, there's not too much to say about it. It's still very similar to the OG Pac-Man. The two biggest differences is that it's isometric, and Pac-Man can jump over the ghost to evade capture. Although it's fun, I'd still rather be playing the original Pac-Man, but some might have a different point of view. PriceTrading.com has Pac-Mania valued at $23. Okay, next up, we have Gauntlet. This fantasy classic was made by Atari and came to arcade cabinets in 1985. A licensed NES version would come out in 87. Tengen then released their unlicensed version the following year. You can play with one or two players, with four optional characters including a wizard, a warrior, an Amazon, and an archer. The game takes place in a series of top-down mazes. The goal of each stage is to survive it and find the exit. Along the way you'll have to battle an assortment of fantasy monsters and creatures. There's items that can be found as well to level up your character. Other items such as treasure will give you points. And of course there's keys to unlock certain doors. This is definitely an OG dungeon crawler, and definitely worth checking out. On PriceCharting.com, the game is valued loose at approximately $11. Okay, next is one of my personal favorites. Let's check out Tubin. Tubing was a midway arcade game, released back in 1988. The unlicensed Tengen port would come out the following year. You take control of players Biff or Jet. You can play in a two-player race or cruise the river solo. You increase your score by collecting different items and passing through specific gates. Along the way, you'll have to avoid certain obstacles such as plants, waterfalls, and even crocodiles. This game is a lot of fun to play and definitely worth checking out. This two-wheeler classic is worth 20 bucks according to PriceCharting.com. The next game on the list is a racing classic. Let's play Super Sprint. Super Sprint is an Atari game, released to the arcades in 1986. Tango released their unlicensed port three years later. Up to three players drive Formula One cars around a circuit from a top-down perspective. After winning three laps, you can move on to the next race. As the player progresses to higher levels, the circuits get more complex and you will have to avoid more obstacles. There's not much more to say about Super Sprint, but I was shocked how addicting and fun this game was. I must have played it for two hours when I first picked it up. A loose copy on PriceCharting.com 
is worth the whopping eight bucks. Okay, next up on the list, we have Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. In 1988, two versions of Temple of Doom were released on the NES. Tengen got their versions on the store shelves first. Shortly after, Mindscape would release a licensed version, although the software was the same for both games. The player takes control of Indy and must navigate through nine levels where he must rescue all the kidnapped children and collect the sacred Sankara stones. I wasn't a big fan of this game at first, but I eventually warmed up to it. It has some cool mechanics, and obviously the music of Indiana Jones is always great. This game is worth 14 bucks on PriceCharting.com. Okay, second last on the list, we have a Sega Classic. Let's play some Shinobi. Shinobi was originally released back in 1987. The player takes control of the ninja Joe Musaya. As Joe, you must stop the terrorist group known as Zed and rescue your kidnapped disciples. The Tengen NES version came out back in 89. The controls and mechanics are based not on the arcade version, but on the Sega Master System port. Other differences include no grenades or close range weapons. I'll be honest, this is probably the worst version of Shinobi I've ever played. That being said, it's still Shinobi and a lot of fun. A loose copy will set you back 20 bucks according to PriceTrain.com. Okay, as usual, we saved the best for last. This guy even has his own little dust cover. Let's check out Tetris, the Soviet mind game. Now everyone knows what Tetris is. You'd be hard pressed to find a gamer that hasn't played it. But the unlicensed Tengen port has an interesting backstory. Back in the 80s, Atari had obtained the rights to release the arcade version of Tetris, which they did. Then, in 89, Tengen released their unlicensed version on the NES. At that point in time, Tetris and all the licensing rights were owned by the Russian government, a department called Ministry of Software and Hardware Exports. The Russians were not happy with Tengen as Tengen had only obtained the rights for the arcade version, not the NES or home console version. Eventually, Nintendo secured the rights to the home console version of Tetris. As a result, Tengen was then ordered to remove any unsold copies of Tetris and destroy them. Of the 400,000 copies made, less than 100,000 had already been sold and made it into the wild. All remaining unsold copies were then taken away and destroyed. Now that you all know the backstory of the Tengen unlicensed port of Tetris, let's have a look at some of the gameplay. As you can see, this is the options menu. Now the biggest difference in the two versions of Tetris is that the unlicensed Tengen port has a two-player mode, whereas the licensed version does not. This was a big deal back in the day as the NES was a kid's console and a lot of families had more than one kid. So it was good to have a two-player mode in any game. Other than that, the other big difference in the unlicensed version is just all the weird Soviet-era Russian imagery and music. As you can see here, you can choose different versions of different songs to listen to while playing, all sounding very Russian. Now the Legends version of Tetris is definitely more polished, but many people do consider 
the Tengen version to be the better port. The fact that so few were sold has made the Tengen port a very sought after collector's item. If you want a loose copy, you'll be paying at least $110, according to PriceTarry.com. Although I scooped up mine on eBay for just 90 bucks. Well, that's the story of Tengen and their unlicensed NES ports. I hope you enjoyed the video. After all the drama, Tengen would go on to develop other games for the Sega Master System, the Genesis, the Game Gear, and even the Sega CD and TurboGrafx-16. Time Warner would eventually acquire the controlling stake in Atari. Down the line, Tengen and Atari were consolidated into Time Warner Interactive. I hope you enjoyed the history lesson surrounding Tengen and their unlicensed NES ports. It's a weird subgenre of collecting for the NES, and a complete collection is fairly easy to acquire. The only one that will really break your bank is Tetris. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one.